All right, I'm going to try and make this short and sweet because there are people that think my videos are too long and they find that to be aggravating and there are people who prefer the longer videos so I'm going to endeavor to make a greater variety of videos that are of different duration varying durations as much as I can you know I'm a little verbose I'm not usually concise and whatever the fuck you know what I'm saying but I'm gonna try okay I'm gonna try what else can you expect out of me? Best I can do. Okay, this is the uh, name of this study. This is about muscle memory, okay? Now, I'm sure, hopefully, you guys all know muscle memory is real. It's not bro science. It's backed by science. It exists. Now, did we need science to come along and tell us muscle memory is real? No. It didn't. I didn't need that. I've known this for fucking decades. But, nonetheless, we have the science now. And the science isn't isn't what it initially was. They've actually found out, and here we go again, right? Okay, if you would have referenced this or looked this information up um, before 2010, you would have had a whole different explanation for muscle memory through science. They would have told you it had something to do with uh, uh, neurological shit, right? And guess what? That's wrong. So this is what this is the latest, greatest so far. This is where they're at with it. Now, if you don't know what muscle memory is, you don't know what I'm talking about. Muscle memory is just a, well, now we know it's, it's reality, but muscle memory is, is the premise that um, if you've worked out and trained, you built some muscle uh, any time in your life, then when you, if you detrain, you stop training, quit training, whatever reason, okay, if you decide someday you're going to return to training, that that muscle memory is just laying in wait. And you're going to be able to regain where you previously were. You're going to get back to where you previously were much, much faster than what it took you to acquire that muscle in the first go around in the first place from the get. And we attribute that to what we had called muscle memory. Okay, but now we know what muscle memory is pretty much. And here's what it is. The name of the study is uh, um, Myonuclei Acquired by Overload Exercise precede hypertrophy and are not lost on detraining. All right, let me read you the abstract of this real quick. It's pretty short, and then we'll talk about it a little bit, and then we'll cut this thing off before it becomes too, uh, too lengthy. The abstract. Effects of previous strength training can be long-lived, even after prolonged subsequent inactivity, and retraining is facilitated by a previous training episode. Traditionally, such muscle memory has been attributed to neural factors in the absence of any identified local memory mechanism in the muscle tissue. We have used in vivo imaging techniques to study live myonuclei belonging to distinct muscle fibers and observe that new myonuclei are added before any major increase in size during overload. The old and newly acquired nuclei or retained during severe atrophy caused by subsequent uh, denervation, lasting for a considerable period of the animal's lifespan. The myonuclei seem to be protected from the high apopotic, apopototic, apopototic activity found in inactive muscle tissue. A hypertrophy episode leading to a lasting elevated number of myonuclei retarded disuse atrophy, and the nuclei could serve as a cell biological substrate for such memory, because the ability to create myonuclei is impaired in the elderly, individuals may benefit from strength training at an early age, and because anabolic steroids facilitate more myonuclei, nuclear permanency may also have implications for exclusion periods after a doping offense. Okay, a lot of information there in that, that short, uh, that kind of lengthy but relatively short paragraph. Um, one of the first things to jump out is that uh, muscle is, muscle cells happen to be one of the very few multinuclear cells in our bodies. Okay, they contain many nuclei rather than just a single nucleus. And when you overload the muscle, through training, um, new additional nuclei are added to the muscle fibers. Okay, did you hear that? New additional nuclei 
are added to those muscle fibers. So you actually are gaining new muscle. You're not, you're not just hypertrophy, you're not just enlarging muscle, fiber, muscle cells. You have acquired more muscle cells than you started out at, with. Okay? Now, what they are, are finding out is they used to think that it made it more difficult for you to experience atrophy. Now, it occurs, but they did think that because of the additional nuclei, that it was going to be more resistant to atrophy. If you took a period of time off, detraining, which you just saw when I took off like seven and a half, almost eight months, really didn't lose a whole lot of size, but now I've been lifting 30 fucking years, and yes, I used anabolics, and yes, I still use anabolics, you know, TRT, but nonetheless anabolics. So uh, I'm going to even build more, you know, uh, nuclei than somebody without additional, you know, testosterone, adding more test. Now, does that mean that if you're a natural, you can't benefit from this? No. If you're a natural, you still benefit from this. You still acquire additional nuclei also. And you don't have to think about it. It happens, and it's already happening, and it probably has already happened to many of you, or most of you, or all of you. Who the hell knows? I don't know how much you train. But the uh, point is, they used to believe that they would hang around for at least three months, and then you would start to lose them if you hadn't trained or done anything to, to keep them up, you know, any upkeep within that three-month period. Well, that was wrong. Now they're finding out, they believe, that they last for, the, for most of the duration of the animal's life. So that means the new muscle that you've gained, the brand new muscle, the additional nuclei, they last, they're yours to keep for the majority of your life. So you can't really even say that you'll lose them or when you'll lose them. The majority of your life, you're going to have all that extra additional muscle. And if you ever return to training, you're going to blow up faster and get back to where you were much faster than it took you to get there in the first place because you have more muscle. It just is smaller. It's atrophied, right? Shrunk. Decreased in size. But you still have more muscle there in, you know, in the fiber. You have more muscle fiber than you had the first go-round. You know, the first time around, you had to acquire the new additional nuclei on top of those nuclei, however many there were, that you already had. Okay? So when you return to training, no matter how long you've been away, you're going to still, you're going to come back faster. That's why, and that's muscle memory. There you go. So in a nutshell, it's the whole thing. So if you don't want to see any more, you can stop the video here. If you want to see some more, the other important things that jump out at me from this study, and should hopefully jump out at some of you guys, are that... Um, in the elderly, now they're saying that it's a pretty good, pretty great benefit that if you try to collect as many of these nuclei as you can, build as much of this new muscle tissue, these new uh, nuclei as you can while you're younger, then this is going to stave off a whole lot of wasting, muscle wasting into your old age. Now, that's pretty awesome. Train or no train later. Isn't that good? I think that's frigging awesome. So, uh, in fact, what they actually said was, uh, scientists believe that filling up our muscles with as many nuclei as we can when we are young can greatly benefit us as we age because building muscle gets harder as we age. And in older age, persistent muscle loss is one of the most serious health risks associated with aging. So that's all good. That's all good news there, right? Yes. Now, another interesting side note here is that it says um, because the ability to create myonuclei, uh, yeah, we already got that, and because anabolic steroids facilitate more my, myonuclei, nuclear permanency may also have implications for exclusion periods after a doping offense. That's big time. So basically they're saying, well, they're not basically, they are saying that... Um, if you were uh, an athlete, competitive athlete, and you were caught using something, you know, some kind of muscle-enhancing compound that's banned, you know, then um, whatever time they would have considered that you couldn't compete, okay, maybe it should be more because of the permanency, the potential permanency of the new myonuclei that you've gained while you were on that. So even though it's cleared your system, you're long off of it, you've been clean however long, 
you're, you know, who knows how long you were on, you're always going to have those additional nuclei. You'll always have them. Okay, so here's what this tells you. If you say you were on gear, all right, you uh, then whatever reason, morally, whatever the deal is, you decide it was in your youth, you built a good deal of muscle, you decide, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. You quit. Okay, so now you've quit. So years later, you're, you're still, you know, you train once in a while still. Guess what? You still are experiencing and maintaining an advantage from that gear. Because it's forever. Because if you can gain even more myonuclei, because you were, you know, enhanced with testosterone or whatever have you, right, among, you know, consider them all is out there, who the hell knows what people use, then, uh, that's an advantage that you're going to always possess, always, never goes away in respect to that, that those additional nuclei will always be there. So, pretty interesting stuff. Pretty interesting stuff indeed. And it also so shows that, uh, tells you there that the more myonuclei that you've acquired, the more resistant you're going to be to atrophy in a period of detraining. So if you've, if you've acquired a lot of new, my nuclei, a lot of new ones, then uh, <clears throat> when you stop training, you're going to be more hesitant to lose that muscle, even if you're not training, than you would be if you had less. So there you go. All good stuff. Um, is it relevant to anybody out there? Yeah, it's relevant to all of us, but what can we do about it? Nothing. It's just something to know, and it's just something to get excited about. If you ever trained and you had it before and you're out of shape now or you want to go back or you haven't trained for an injury for quite a while or whatever reason, go back. It's not going to be as hard as it was the first go around. Sure, it's going to be tough to get back up on the horse. You know, it's going to be it's going to be tough, but it's not going to be as hard as it was the first. So that's good news for everybody. All right, that's it for me for now. And I hope I was I hope that was better and a little bit shorter for some of you guys out there. God knows. I don't want to monopolize all your time. I know you're on busy schedules. All right. Take care. Have an excellent evening. And uh, I will catch up with you again shortly.